So in this lesson on classification, we're going to learn about the taxonomic groups in the hierarchical classification system and what the evidence there is for the three domain system over the five kingdom model of classification and how the scientific community have worked to validate this evidence. So the variety of life on Earth is simply phenomenal. I mean, in this section, you can learn about how exactly we classify all these millions of living organisms and what methods we can use to do it. It is vital that we do this so that we have a catalogue of past and present species. It needs to be internationally accepted so that scientists all over the world can work together regardless of language. Scientists can use classification to look at evolutionary patterns, monitor populations and biodiversity. Now Carl Linnaeus is the godfather of taxonomy, which is the science of classification. He used the physical features or morphology of organisms to put them into particular groups. He devised a hierarchical structure for classification which is still used today but it's just been slightly modified and updated. He also devised a clever way of naming organisms called the binomial system, which we also still use. So Linnaeus took all of life and split it into smaller and smaller groups called taxonomic groups. For example, he noticed that animals and plants are different, and so he put them into separate kingdoms. Then, within each group, he split them up into further phylums. And so for animals, he split them into vertebrates and invertebrates, for example, and so on and so on, into smaller groups until you reach the lowest form of classification, which is the individual species. So if we look, for example, at uh, the lion, we can classify that like this, with its domain, eukaryota, or eukaryotes, then into the animal kingdom, the uh, chordate, which is the vertebrates, it's a mammal, uh, carnivore, it's a cat, panthera, uh, is the genus and the species name is Leo. Okay, This is how to remember the different taxonomic groups. This is my, my way of remembering those groups. Uh, delicious king prawn curry or fat greasy sausages stands for domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now for a very long time life was classified into five kingdoms, animals, plants, fungi, protoctists and bacteria. However, using technology such as DNA analysis discussed later in this uh, topic, it was realised that actually there seemed to be two distinct groups of prokaryotes and one of them, the archaea bacteria, probably gave rise to the other four eukaryotic kingdoms. Therefore, a new taxonomic group was added above the kingdom level called the domain. And the three domain system of classification was introduced in 1977, with those three domains of life being archaea, eubacteria and eukaryota. Now, this is a phylogenetic tree shown here, which shows how life evolved from that uh, universal common ancestor. If you start at the bottom um, and move your way up, you can see it splits into those two sections. The blue ones are the bacteria, which consist of one kingdom called the eubacteria. This is the typical bacteria that we think about um, in biology. The other half of life developed into the archaea, which is made of one king kingdom, the archaea bacteria, uh, these are the ancient bacteria which have discovered in living sort of in extreme environments um, these days and from analysis it seems that they gave rise to eukaryota. That is why they branch off from here as shown in the brown and they contain the four eukaryotic kingdoms, animals, plants, fungi and protoctis. So there are now three domains and actually six kingdoms really. The evidence for these three domains, where does it come from? Well, the evidence that led to this theory uh, being put forward is that there are differences in the sequences of nucleotides in the cell's ribosomal RNAs. Okay, Clear differences in those sequences. The cell membrane lipid structure as well is, is different. The sensitivity to antibiotics and toxins is different. So this was enough for the scientific community to accept that there are definitely two distinct groups of prokaryotes and one of eukaryotes and therefore there should be these three domains. Although there is still plenty of debate about how the initial life on earth started and how these three initial cell types came into existence from it. 
So let's focus now a little bit on the eukaryotic kingdoms, uh, the plants, animals, fungi, and protoctista. Uh, plants are what we call autotrophs, they make their own food, they contain chlorophyll for photosynthesis, and they have cellulose cell walls. Uh, fungi are what we call saprophytic, okay? Uh, that means they live off dead organisms and they do extracellular di digestion. They have a, a chitin cell wall, they reproduce by spores, and they're made of a structure called a mycelium of hyphae. Uh, animalia or animals are, they are heterotrophs, they have to eat other organisms to get their food. They're capable of whole body movement and they have no cell walls. And the last one, the protoctista, the protists. Now these are strange kind of group of organisms, they're microscopic. We call it the dustbin kingdom, it's basically anything that won't fit into the other kingdoms. Um, we stick them in the protoctista, so they're sort of slightly plant, have features, slightly bacteria features, like animal feature to them. So I mentioned earlier that Carl Linnaeus came up with a binomial system for naming organisms, okay? And this is the fact that every organism is given two Latin names, a genus name and a species name. There are some rules that you need to abide by when you're naming organisms. First of all, the genus name has a capital uh, uppercase uh, first letter, but the species name has a lowercase first letter. You should always use italics um, when you're uh, showing that it is a Latin binomial name, and if you're handwriting it, then you underline it to show that. And after the first use of the binomial uh, name, when you're using it in, in your writing, you can abbreviate the initial of the genus name uh, and the species name. So for example, what is the binomial uh, name for a gorilla? Well, actually, if you look at the classification of a gorilla, its genus and its species actually end up becoming gorilla, gorilla. But remember, the genus has a capital letter and the species name has a small letter, okay? Or we can abbreviate it to G, gorilla. The binomial name for humans, you probably know, is Homo sapiens.